Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today we're going to have a look at two very similar add-ons, Botanique and Sequoia, who both handle adding vegetation to your scene using Blender's internal particle system. If you're stuck on which add-on to get, hopefully this video will help you out a little bit. Alright, let's get to it. So first thing to note on both the marketplace pages is that there is a pretty big price difference. Sequoia's light version goes for about $15, whereas Botanique's light version goes for about $49. If you want to get all of Sequoia's features, it will only cost you $49, whereas if you want Botanique's full version, you're looking at spending about $129. A bit expensive, but is it worth it? That's actually what I'm here to talk about today. I wanted to perform some side-by-side -side comparisons today, so I thought we'd first start out with some grass on a simple plane. With Botanique, it's pretty straightforward. You choose your plane, hit scatter assets, and with the plus button, you get to choose grass, and you have some really great examples to choose from. Hit OK, and there we go. And you can, of course, add other elements with the plus button. To avoid the white texture seeping through, of course, you'd naturally add some grass texture to the ground just like this. Alright, let's jump over to Sequoia and see how it handles grass. You choose your plane, hit select element, and under grass we get a few options. However, unlike Botanique, we don't really get any previews of the types of grass. So let's just try selecting one and hit add element. Right away it doesn't look like much, but if we try increasing the number, we start getting a few more into the scene. One thing you'll probably notice right away is that these grass assets look extremely repetitive. So to break that, let's try adjusting the randomness of the orientation, size and rotation. Now that's a lot better. As for layering, let's try adding in another layer by hitting next layer, selecting grass and another type and hitting add element again. Just make sure you have your surface selected before hitting this button or you'll get a few bugs. Having added all of the different grass types, you see that it works pretty similarly. You also get the option to draw exactly where you want the grass and other foliage, whereas in Botanique you get to paint in the density manually with the weight paint button like this. Although before doing so you need to subdivide the mesh to allow for more flexibility when weight painting, which is something you don't have to do with Sequoia. But wait, that's not all. Botanique also allows you to literally draw on vines onto meshes, which is something Sequoia doesn't support. And I thought this is a very important feature that I should mention in the differences between the two add-ons. Alright, let's put these two side by side. Although the controls and methods are very similar, I think the biggest difference is the variation of meshes that each add-on provides. Sequoia mostly reuses the same model, so you need to randomize the direction, size and rotation to kind of break up the repetitiveness. Whereas Botanique seems to have different types of meshes which when combined together look a bit more natural and you have to do almost no work to make you feel more randomized like you would in real life. So all in all, the Botanique grass looks a bit more lush and natural, but I still think Sequoia does a fantastic job at a far cheaper price point. They both offer customization in terms of ratio of each element, but in Botanique you pretty much get everything listed in this neat little menu, whereas with Sequoia you need to kind of go back and forth with layers, and unless you specifically name the layers, it might be hard to kind of tell what is what especially since you don't have thumbnails to work with. So how about trees? Let's start with Sequoia this time. You add them in the exact same way you did the grass, but again, I think it's such a bummer that you don't have thumbnails because you get a massive list of options. But for example, what is the difference between Cactus 1, Cactus 2 and Cactus 3? <laughs> All right, so let's try adding in um, Elm. And yeah, looks pretty nice. Let's do the same with Botanique. Under Spawn Asset, we can choose a bunch of foliage. You also have a search function, which is great. Adding in an elm, you get the option to make it editable, which actually means you can go to the shader editor and change the color, saturation, brightness, and the typical BSCF options. 
You also get the option to random transform the tree, which generates a new tree that has a different orientation, and the shape of the overall silhouette changes, and so on. I think this is a feature I would have loved to have in Sequoia. The ability to kind of randomize the silhouette a bit more and not just rotate and size up the different meshes. And there is absolutely no way to change the color or brightness of the meshes themselves, which again is such a great tool in Botanique, especially for more stylized scenes. Hopefully these are some features that will be added in the future. But yeah, comparing them side by side again, it looks like Botanique seems to be a bit fuller leaves wise and a bit more realistic, so it would probably be a bit more suitable for realistic scenes. Although I have to say, comparing both trees in wireframe mode, Sequoia's tree is far more low poly and less heavy than Botanique's trees. If you have an old PC that isn't very good at handling particles or heavy amounts of poly, Sequoia is definitely the add-on to consider. Oh, and one really cool thing to mention is that you get the option to import snowy trees in Botanique and you can even control the amount of snow and the direction of it. I did find a snowy-esque tree type in Sequoia, there might be more though, but you unfortunately don't get to control the amount of snow. But I of course understand that's a very kind of niche feature which isn't exactly necessary for everyone. And what about rocks? So starting off with Botanique, you do get a few rock options to choose from, but it sort of works like the trees, meaning you just mostly import one by one. Whereas with Sequoia, you get to scatter rocks, which I think is such a great feature. Also, you get a few more rock assets to choose from than you would in Botanique. The scatter option also works for trees, so if you have a landscape, scattering trees is an absolute walk in the park for Sequoia. You just choose the landscape, choose your trees, and hit add element. I think this is such a great feature and the ability to layer with other trees, grass, and so on is just such a powerful tool. Even if Botanique had this, I don't think it would be able to handle as many trees as Sequoia can. Other than the workflow being a bit different, each add-on has its own kind of unique library. Let's quickly go through Sequoia's. Sequoia mainly consists of grass, trees, which includes normal trees, bamboos, cacti, palms, dead trees, bushes, and other tropical trees, and of course, rocks. Here's a sort of chart of all of the models, which I think is really great of the creator to add, as we can refer to this chart to see which model we'd like. Although having them in the add-on as a thumbnail would be more useful, I think. As for Botanique, it mainly consists of normal trees, flowers, garden assets, grass, ivy, leaves, lily pads, small plants and bushes, pots, rocks, cacti, tropical vegetation, and so on. That is a huge library of assets. Actually, here's an image they've provided that lists all of the assets that come with the light version and the full version. Oh, and one thing to also mention is a new feature Botanique has added, which allows for animated trees blowing in the wind. And I just think this is so, so cool. Definitely handy for all of you animators out there. So in summary, here's a little chart I made comparing the two add-ons. As I mentioned before, there is a clear price difference between the two and Sequoia tends to run a bit smoother on slower and older computers. As for workflow, there seems to be a lot more steps required by Sequoia and you don't get any preview thumbnails, making it difficult to kind of navigate which mesh to add in. But as for workflow, I think Sequoia works a lot better for larger scale environments as the scatter option is just super handy and you get to generate trees, plants and rocks super fast. As for realism, I think that Botanique has more realistic assets, and if you're working on smaller scale scenes where you're supposed to see the assets up close, or even for architectural visualization, Botanique just offers so many great assets options like garden assets, pods, and so on. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Hopefully this little comparison helped you guys make up your mind if you were stuck on which add-on to get. In about two weeks, we're starting up concert creation again and creating a stylized interior, which we will later bring into Unreal. I'm so freaking excited. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.